All righty. So welcome to those who are just joining on for your Zoom. Today is National Coffee Day. I don't know if people are aware of that. So sit down, get your cup of joe, whatever you'd like. Um, we'll be getting started in just a few minutes for the Claremont College's current student panel. Um, thanks so much for joining us. Um, we'll just kind of wait till the number stables out a little bit with the attendees and then we'll get going really shortly once we see things kind of level off. Hopefully you won't need so much caffeine though to go to bear with us because we have a very engaging star studded panel that you're about to get to interact with. So, all righty. So it looks like the number is just about stabilized. So um, again, for those of you who have, who have just joined, um, welcome, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're tuning in from, from whatever part of the globe. Um, we're super, super um, grateful for you to be spending some time to get to learn a little bit more about the Claremont Colleges located in sunny Claremont, California. Um, of course, we're all tuning in from various parts of the world. So when our student panelists introduce themselves, they'll be able to give you a little bit of a taste for that global Claremont College uh, vibe. Um, but just to kick things off, um, uh, hello, my name's Tom Campbell. I'm one of the assistant deans of admission at Pomona College. I've um, been, work been working at the college for about three years now and have loved to be able to interact not just with Pomona students, but with students from across the five C's as we like to call the five undergraduate Claremont Colleges. Um, so the way that this presentation is going to work, this is a little different than if you've attended some of our previous general information sessions about the Claremont Colleges. This one is really the one that's completely student-led and run, um, once I stop talking. Um, so what's really great is that, you know, we all saw so many great questions that you all submitted to learn more about student life at the Claremont Colleges, what it's like to engage with research and internships, clubs and organizations. Um, you know, what it's like to be part of a consortium and how does that enhance your college experience. So um, rather than hearing from us in admissions about what that's like, let's put the real deal to the test with our attendees. So um, our panelists are all current students who will be happy to speak on those experiences and answer any of your questions. Um, so to get things going, we'll do some introductions with all the panelists. Um, so uh, now that I've introduced myself, I'll actually kick it off to uh, Trey from Pomona to introduce himself to all of you. Hi there, everybody. My name is Trey, as Tom said. Uh, I go to Pomona. I'm a junior there. I study theater. Um, I work in admissions as a head guide, and I work in Star 47 as lead agent. And um, on campus, you know, you'll find me singing and dancing a lot uh, with ballroom dance, um, student theater, that kind of thing. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, my name's Angela. I'm a junior at Scripps. I am majoring in psychology. Um, my pronouns are she, her, hers. I am new to the admissions ambassador team, uh, but outside of admissions, I worked at the Motley and I was a student intern at the Dean of Students. Hey everyone, my name is Jeremy. My pronouns are he, him, his. Uh, I am a senior at Claremont McKenna College studying economics and computer science with a concentration in finance. Um, I'm originally from Singapore, but I'm currently in the Bay where I grew up as well. Uh, at the Office of Mission, I am a senior interviewer, a tour guide, and also one of the managers for a social media team. So like us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, all that good stuff. Um, outside of Mission, I am the captain of the rugby team uh, at, the, at the colleges. I am a research analyst for the Financial Economics Institute, and I am the executive chef of the Cooking and Baking Club Best Star on Campus. Cool. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. My name is Kylie. I'm a senior at MUD. Um, I am currently in the Bay Area, and that's where I'm from. Um, I'm majoring in math and concentrating in dance, so a lot of times you can find me at the other five C's dancing. Um, and outside of working at admissions, which I really love, um, I also work for the Office of Student Affairs on like planning campus events, which is really fun. Hi everyone, I'm Milena. I am a junior at Pitzer and also a tour guide, and I am an organizational studies major with a minor in anthropology, and then I also have an overall focus in urban studies, and I am from New York City. I'm currently here now, and a little bit about what I do outside the classroom. I've been an orientation leader for a freshman orientation program, as well as being a member of Identity Board, which is where we have one member from every affinity group meeting weekly and talking about coalition building and things like that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here today with us, our lovely panelists, and for introducing yourselves. 
Um, so for you attendees, just to give you kind of a rundown of the nuts and bolts and the kind of housekeeping items of this session. Um, so you'll notice, um, as you may have seen in the chat, that this um, session is done through Zoom webinar. So um, the question uh, portion of this session will be actually through the Q&A box rather than the chat. So if you see the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, that's where you'll be able to submit questions um, that hopefully we'll have time to throw to our panelists live at the second half of the program. For this first um, 25 minutes or so though, I, I will kind of um, pitch some pre-submitted questions that many of you sent in before you registered um, or as you registered, you know, saying what you wanted to know most about. We kind of tried to cull through as many of those questions as we could um, to kind of cover as many bases as possible. So we're hoping that that first half hour is able to um, answer those questions for you um, at that point in time. Um, so yeah, feel free to use the Q&A box. We do also have a wonderful squad of admissions officers on the back end who are answering questions individually as well. So um, definitely feel free to utilize that box at any point um, during the session. Um, as you can also see from this slide, um, this uh, session is going to be really be focusing on student life and experiences as opposed to a deep dive into our admissions processes. I know there were lots of questions um, that some of you sent in about admissions, but given that these are current students and not admissions officers, um, we have many other opportunities that our offices allow for you to get to learn more about admissions and financial aid. But um, this, this session is definitely really geared more towards student life and experiences. Um, and also for the sake of time, we have hundreds of majors across the Claremont Colleges. So unfortunately, we won't be able to do deep dives into the specific majors and programs that some of you have asked us to do. So apologies for that. Um, but all of our um, our institutions have great, really robust websites that have staff contacts, they have faculty chairs and liaisons, student liaisons as well for many of these academic programs. So we definitely recommend if you have those questions that are major or program specific, um, that'd be a great chance for that. Um, but at this point, I'll stop sharing my screen and actually on that vein of choosing a major, I think that's actually a really great jumping off point for my first question that I want to send to all the panelists. So. I know that there's a lot of hype and hysteria kind of around having everything figured out as a 17, 18 year old whenever you're heading into college. So um, for those of you who chose to come to your respective institutions and the Claremont Colleges, can you tell us, you know, each of you go around and maybe tell us a little bit about your academic journey and kind of how, you know, you've been able to explore your interests academically and eventually solidify onto a major or a path for yourself. Um, whether or not you changed your mind from the beginning when you were applying to colleges, I think any talking points around the flexibility of kind of how academics are structured um, and encouraged at the Claremont Colleges um, would be hopefully very reassuring to many of our panelists who I think are feeling that pinch to have the life plan figured out right now. Uh, yeah, um, basically, I think that, hmm, I guess starting in high school, I I'd only picked up theater in my junior year or so. Um, and so by the time I was going through my college process, I was like, you know, I wasn't ready to commit to like a conservatory or something like that. Um, and I also had other interests. And so that's why I was looking into liberal arts, um, ended up coming to Pomona. And uh, as you may know, there's like a breadth of study requirement, you have to take classes in all these different areas. And so my priority was really like going through all those requirements and taking those classes in those areas that I was also interested in, like philosophy or sociology or, you know, that kind of thing. Unfortunately, I'm not too STEM. So, you know, I didn't explore that one too much. Um, but, you know, going through that, I kind of had the process of finding out that I liked theater even more than I thought. And also finding out that, you know, there are areas that I thought I was interested in that I ended up not being interested in, you know, and I still got a requirement for it. Uh, so that's kind of how it worked out for me. And I ended up declaring in April of my first year. Yeah, so if any of the rest of you have other things you want to add to your journeys, feel free. I don't know if you want to go into founding order or if we want to kind of follow that model. Yeah, I can go next. Um, it was kind of similar for me um, in high school. I knew I wanted to do something like psychology or um, sociology related. And I know Scripps doesn't have the major sociology. And that's one thing that I really liked about the consortium is that if you can't major at your college, you can major at another college. And so, um, yeah, so whenever I, my first year of Scripps, I took the graduation requirements. Uh, those courses and they kind of like piqued my interest but I knew that I wanted to do psychology so I was kind of like looking to maybe dual major or double major but 
like once I took those classes, I was like, maybe I'm not interested anymore. So, but um, those GE requirements really helped me a lot to figure out like what I do like, what I don't like. Um, yeah, and I mean, I changed my major or I, I haven't declared or I did declare yet, but before I declared, I thought like I was gonna be an environmental analysis major, like a media studies major, like a double major, but at the end of the day, I like psychology. So that's what I'm sticking to. So that's how it was for me. Yeah, kind of going off a similar vein, uh, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do in high school. I had taken a economics class, two economics classes. I'd taken a computer science class, but coming to college, I always thought I was like a really sciencey person. I thought I was gonna go something like pre-med or science management. Um, so I thought CMC was great because I uh, visited, loved the community there, loved the hands-on approach to learning. Um, but when I actually got to CMC, um, my favorite classes were my intro economics classes and my intro computer science classes. And I thought just the way that made me think and pushed me outside of what I thought I was good at is something that really attracted me to it. And also the people in my major. I mean, I was just pretty lucky um, to talk to like really fun people and really smart people that kept me going. And I'm like, yeah, I see like computer science kind of blossoming like one way and economics blossoming another way. And then finding out that actually I can do both together. Um, I really enjoyed that. And that's kind of what led me to my major today. Yeah, um, I had a pretty like tumultuous major deciding process, I would say. I, in high school, like I liked math and science. Uh, I had never taken CS or engineering, but they like sounded legit. I don't know. I didn't really know what those like entailed. Um, but I was like, okay, like I think I want something in STEM. So like MUD felt good in that sense. Um, and then at MUD, we have a core curriculum where you like kind of get a taste of everything. Uh, and basically I would like be sitting in chem lab and I'd be like, yes, I'm going to be a chemist. This is so fun. And then I'd like, I'd be like in my engineering class, I'd be like, no, like this is so cool. So like that was like a whole thing uh, where like, I think I just got like really overexcited and it took a little bit of like focusing in and being like, okay, like what, what do I actually want to do? Um, but then even after that, I changed a bunch of times. Uh, my sophomore year, I thought I was going to be a math comp bio major. Then I ended up not declaring anything until halfway through junior fall when I declared math physics. Um, but then this past semester, I was like, there's so many fun math classes being offered at Pomona and I could just take them all if I switched to a math major. So I think next week I'm going to submit the form officially and switch, but that's where we're at right now. Um, for me, I was really excited about going to college and studying urban studies and a lot of undergraduate universities don't offer that. Um, so I really love that Pitzer, at Pitzer you can actually create your own major. So if you don't like any of our 40 majors and you don't actually like any of the other colleges majors either, um, you can design your own from scratch, which was my original plan. Um, but then I fell in love with organizational studies and I decided to do that with a concentration in urban studies so I could get the best of both worlds. Um, and org studies is pretty special to Pitzer, but it's basically, I like to say, our form of business. So you're looking at um, business from less of an econ lens and more so from a psychology, sociology lens, looking at how leadership structures formulate, um, how organizations run, things like that. Um, so that's what I'm doing now. And I also really love anthropology because I took an anthropology class at Scripps my freshman year called Stuff, which is a funny name for a class, but it was about economic anthropology and we were tracking production, um, sorry, goods from production to consumption. And I really love that. So that's what I did for my minor as well. Hey, I think stuff is a great model for all the five schools. There's lots of stuff, you know, both tangible and intangible, and it's great to be able to explore it across all the five campuses. So thank you for those answers. Um, definitely one of the other questions that we got a lot of in so many different words from, from students who um, logged onto the Zoom um, was basically about um, how do the students across the five campuses mesh? Are there any traditions amongst the students that you kind of want to share a little bit about? Um, and how often do you collaborate across these different campuses? Um, so maybe again, with this question, if each of you want to kind of give that brief answer from your own experiences about how you've engaged with the other campuses during your time and kind of yeah, how things mesh, um, any traditions that you've celebrated or whatnot. Yeah, um, something I basically always say is that like, the only way you could avoid someone from a different college is by like locking yourself in your room. And even then it's like a little tricky, <laughs> but basically like, you know, um, at Pomona, uh, 
you only have like one class where it's only Pomona students and that's your ID one, like your freshman seminar. Um, but then past that, every other class you take Pomona or on the other campuses, um, you'll have students from the other colleges. Um, and so in that way, I've developed relationships like across the Claremont colleges. Um, on the weekends, you have events at all the colleges and like they're not exclusive, you know, like you can go across campus to like, you know, eat at the other dining halls or, you know, go to this like party or whatever, you know, like having fun in that way. Um, and, you know, just it's, it's really cool because you can make your experience as small as having, you know, a small close knit group of friends. And then you also have your connections within a consortium of like 6,000. So it's best of both worlds, in my opinion. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, Scripps has core classes, which you take your first semester of your um, first year, and they trickle down to your, um, I think, second semester, sophomore year. And those are Scripps only classes. But other than that, um, you can take classes at the other colleges. And like Trey said, that you collaborate almost every day, like my day-to-day -day life was like going to the coop trying to work on homework or like going to the motley and in my classes there are um, students from all the other colleges and it basically you collaborate every day like you make friends with um, people on different campuses it's just yeah it's literally every day like every second of the day yeah continuing off of that like the consortium is absolutely amazing resource that we have um, I'm getting my computer science education from MUD um, primarily and getting my economics uh, education from CMC primarily. So I get to like, interact with students from all across the consortiums and all kind of uh, different aspects. So academic is one. A lot of my, like I said, computer science courses are at Harvey MUD. But I'm I took a bunch of classes at Pomona, religious studies class at Pomona, took a math course at Scripps. So it's really fun to be able to be in these different academic learning environments. But beyond academics, the, like the social life super intertwined. Um, one of my favorite events last year was I actually got to go to a script speaker series and listen to the Crazy Rich Asians cast talk um, and speak about their experiences. And I got to ask um, some fun questions there. So it's a real, like, um, once again, amazing mix. You can, like Trey said, keep it to your small bubble on your campus between your friends, but also extend out to like the, con the wider consortium. And I think that's like such an amazing opportunity that we have. I totally agree with everything everyone has said so far about like collaborating like socially and academically. Um, I think another thing I just wanted to add is like 5C clubs have been super fun for me. Um, and I really like, like the idea that like, oh, it's not, you're just like kind of randomly bumping into people, but it's also like you're not in like a class where like a prof is leading you, but it's kind of like you are like, it feels like you're really working closely towards whatever your club is doing. Um, with other people. And that's something that I've really liked. Uh, so yeah, join, Z, uh, join 5C Science Bus too, if you're interested. So I have to jump in here as well. And um, my rugby club is a 5C sport. So I get it, like mixed with some of my best friends I've made through rugby have been from um, like all the other colleges. And it's not people I see just socially, academically. It's people I get to like practice with and like work out with. And I really enjoy that. So um, definitely emphasizing that comment as well. Um, yeah, I totally agree with what everyone said. I think especially as a New Yorker, walking is super important to me. And so what I do with all of my friends is if I want to hang out with them, we'll go on a walk throughout the five C's and wave to people and meet new people that way. Um, I'm never really just like sitting in one place. I'm always on the go. So that's been really fun for me. Um, but something I really want to highlight is just our dining hall culture throughout the five C's. I think it's super unique in that we can eat at any of the other seven we have seven dining halls in total and we can eat at any one of them. And so at every meal, you're gonna see people from all of the colleges and a lot of our dining halls only have really big tables. So you're forced to just sit with random people and like see how it goes. And that's how, like how I've made so many of my friends is just by like forcing myself to mingle and things like that. Yeah, that's actually a great segue into my next question, which is about the food. We're getting a lot of questions about dining culture. So this one, I think just a real quick answer, kind of building off what Malaya said about being able to engage with all the different campus dining halls. That's obviously a big perk of being a Claremont College student. Maybe if each of you can go around and say, you know, what your favorite dining hall is and whether or not it's on your own campus. Um, and maybe like your favorite dish that you have at the Claremont College is just real quick, kind of rapid fire with this one. This one. Yeah, my, my answer is always changing, but um, you know, I'm reminiscing. Uh, I really love Frank and I love Scripps. Um, and my favorite meal is actually at Scripps. It's the, uh, the steak, salmon, and that that meal that they have like on thursday night it's so good yeah 
That one's pretty good. Um, but for me, my favorite dining halls are um, either Mud or Pitzer. And my favorite meal, I mean, it's always changing, but it would be the burritos Sunday dinner at Mud. But too good, just too good. Yeah, we're really spoiled for choice um, at the colleges. You, you can have, there are a bunch of online menus that I know I check every day uh, when I was in school to kind of see where I'm going, going for breakfast, going for lunch, going for dinner. I'd also go for mud uh, breakfast um, because there's, there's make your own smoothies. And I thought that was like an integral part of my uh, college career. But have to rep the home team. My favorite dining hall is Collins Dining Hall on CMC campus. Um, the, like the ladies there who work the front desk and people like certain food are like some of the sweetest people I've met. Um, I still talk to some of them actually. Um, and favorite meal is Little Italy. So kind of like make your own pasta bar at CMC every Tuesdays and Thursdays. I like that because there's like a lot of variety, but it's also super consistent and they know just like how I like it done. So that's going to be the favorite meal. Um, I would say my two favorite dining halls are Mud because I think it's very good and it's very close for me a lot of the time. Um, and Frank, I like Frank, um, especially Frank brunch when you like get in line and then you like get your bagel and you're like, yes. Um, but I think my favorite meal overall would probably be the like creation salad at Mud. Uh, they have like fresh berries and avocado and smoked salmon and it like makes me believe that I'm being healthy. So I like that a lot. Yeah, I definitely love all the dining halls too. My friends and I actually have a very strict rotation of what meal we're eating where every week. That's pretty standard. Um, but I will say that Pitzer is definitely my favorite dining hall. Specifically, Thursday nights we have poke. And then for dessert, we have like a cobbler bar. So every week it's like apple cobbler or like berry cobbler, things like that. So we also have tons of like vegan options. I've had a lot of vegan chicken by mistake, which has been a lot of fun too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought for a second no one was going to say one of Pomona. So Kylie kudos to you for repping frank dining hall at pomona college um and uh, trey did you say a pomona dining hall too oh okay i must have missed that you've all been saying such delicious foods that my train of thought from five minutes ago is out the window um my personal favorite is actually pitzer and a benefit actually for faculty and staff is that we also have the option to eat in the dining halls and um pomona gives us actually swipes to get meals with students so i've had meals with Pomona students at Pitzer's Dining Hall because I was like, this is my favorite and gives me a chance to stretch my legs. So um, yeah, everyone in the community is able to take advantage of it too, which is awesome. Um, so switching gears a little bit from kind of some of the fun things and then we'll go back to that. <laughs> um, back to academics because there are a lot of questions from students about what that looks like. And I thought this one in particular was really, I think, well worded. So shout out to whoever sent this one in. But um, academically, how are students implored to explore their interests? Is the curriculum more grade oriented? or learning oriented, how accessible are the professors? Um, and how does this differ across the colleges? So I know there's a lot to kind of absorb, but hopefully you can kind of uh, reflect on that question a little bit. Yeah, it's, um, it's a big question. <laughs> and, um, you know, you could, you could talk about it for a while. Um, I think that the portion that I will cover will be that uh, professors, in my experience, have been super accessible in that um, your classes are small enough so that they know your name, you know, like you can talk to them right after class, you can go to their office hours, you can email them and they'll usually respond within, you know, a day or two and at most usually. Um, and so really like when it comes to grades and that kind of thing, I'm not really too worried in that all your professors are really like striving for you to succeed. It's not like they have a quota or anything like that. You know, it's not like we only have this many A's and this many B's like, I think all our professors are happy if everyone gets A's, right? And they just wanna have us get there. Um, and so, you know, if you need an extension, if you need um, some time, they're also very accepting in that way. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, adding on to that, um, most classes that I've taken are grade oriented, but it really differs with the professor. And like Trey said that um, it's mostly like what you can contribute to the class. And in my experience, professors have been um, pretty accessible, like really accessible. Uh, I was on a committee at Scripps where we were um, granting money for students to like do events with their professors or like with their classes. And it was highly encouraged that like you go to the village and eat ice cream with your class and your professor. And it, it just, it was also like events like that outside of the classroom that kind of built that community. And like, oh, if you need a letter of recommendation, oh, I went on this like 
ice cream event with my professor, like, and I've talked to them outside of the classroom, like, it's easy for me to ask for a letter of recommendation. It's stuff like that that makes it very, um, like, one on one with the professor. And like Trey said, the small classes make it so much more easier for you to connect with your professor. Yeah, CMC, kind of our uh, learning ethos is learning for the sake of doing. So a lot of my classes are focused on, okay, let's learn this um, and let's apply it as well. For example, in my econometrics class, we're not really looking at Sally's seven oranges and Johnny's six apples. We're looking at like the million dollar question of does student teacher ratios affect test scores? And my professor is actually head of all economic data in Southern California. So we're looking at public data sets um, from public high schools and actually using this information, which I think is really cool. Um, I'm someone who learns very like hands on, like actually applying and like using the things I learn in everyday situations that kind of helps me. Um, also, I got a lot, it's a great question, um, super broad, like Trey said, uh, but I think that I would describe the CMC academic environment as collaborative rather than competitive. So it's more learning oriented as in, there's a lot of like tests and quizzes and exams are like a standard test of knowledge, but also group projects and presentations, like working with people, learning these interpersonal skills are really emphasized um, at CMC at least. And professors are so accessible for me. For example, my micro professor, um, I knew when her kids were playing baseball, so I went not to text her for help with my homework. Um, it's really like this personalized connection with them, and which I once again really love. Yeah, I totally agree with everything. Um, I guess a couple of things to add, like I think that I was like really concerned about being apart from everybody because I totally agree where like all of my classes feel really collaborative and like I'm very used to learning like from and alongside with like my friends. Um, but like I don't have a single class that I'm taking this semester at MUD or at Pomona or any of the other colleges that like doesn't have a group chat, which is like everyone in the class. And like I really, really love that. Um, so I think that like speaks a little bit to like the learning culture. Um, and then also with like teachers being really accessible and like really wanting you to succeed. I think that um, a lot of times like when I've been like maybe struggling with something like oftentimes the prof like maybe realizes it before you do and they just call you in and they're not like angry at you or disappointed but they're just like hey I really want to make sure that you're going to succeed like let's have a chat and I really appreciated those conversations too. Yeah, I agree with what everyone's been saying. Uh, at Pitzer, you actually don't have to declare your major since until your middle year, junior year. Um, so you have a ton of time to really explore all of those options. And we actually have a ton of classes that we're required to take, ton being four. Um, one is intercultural, global, and local. And the other one is social justice praxis and theory. So those classes are ones that everyone takes. And an example of my global class right now is authoritarian institution. So you have these really niche fun classes that you're taking and get to explore your interests that way. Um, we do have grades, but I definitely don't think we're grade oriented. It's much more focused on the learning environment that we're creating and our motto is mindful of the future. And I think that's a common thread you'll see through all of our classes is that we're thinking about how can we take this knowledge outside of the classroom and use it in our daily lives and careers as well. Um, we also had a movement on campus where we kind of made sure everyone passed and we had a nobody fails at Pitzer movement. So that was all student run to kind of show our emphasis on learning too. Awesome. And I feel like Melina is always just dropping me those great segues because she said learning outside the classroom. And that was going to be my very next question. Um, so um, obviously with professors at the Claremont Colleges, really the reason they work at the Claremont Colleges, right, is because they want to teach, they want to mentor, they're not there exclusively for their own research or their own PhD careers. That's why they chose to work at this collaborative environment um, that's really student centered. So um, maybe if each of you could maybe talk a little bit about how you've you know, done some learning off campus, whether that be through research or internships or study abroad or any kind of experiential learning outside the classroom, um, I think that'd be really helpful for the attendees. Yeah, um, very brief story time. Um, I took basic acting in my first semester first year and uh, within about three weeks, my professor was like, hey, you wanna go into the village and have some boba? And I, of course, accepted. Went to the village expecting it to be some kind of like, you know, brief check-in sort of deal. And all of a sudden he was like, what is your four-year scope? You know, like, what do you plan on doing after you graduate? And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, I came to a liberal arts school because I don't know what I wanna do, right? But you know, whatever. Um, actually, during that conversation, we ended up talking about the CERT program. Um, so the summer undergraduate, summer undergraduate research program at Pomona um, kind of funds summer research, five to 10 weeks, 
um, with grants of up to $5,000 um, in the summer. And so uh, I ended up sending something in before I'd actually declared theater for theater research in Japan and Singapore. Uh, it got accepted. And uh, summer after my first year, I was in I was in Japan for six weeks and Singapore for two weeks doing a whole bunch of cool things. Um, so, you know, it's just those like little things, you know, uh, with your professors that can really lead to much greater things. Um, yeah, it was a lot of, it was a life changing experience. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Basically just kind of any um, things that you've done, you know, in terms of your um, off campus learning outside the classroom, whether it be research or internships or any kind of opportunities that you feel like have stemmed from your, your classes into something beyond that. Yeah, um, similar to Trey, I, um, so I'm majoring in psychology, so research is a big um, topic whenever, because I also want to go to grad school. So whenever I was talking to my major advisor about it, um, we kind of, I was able to be a part of research labs and I'm currently doing one at Pitzer right now. And those have really helped me to like think beyond um, undergrad and like what I want to do after undergrad and like what I want to learn during grad school, which helped a lot. So professors really help with that um, because my professor, or my major advisor is a professor. So he kind of like, and it's also, it helped so much because um, he is also first gen and I'm also first gen. So it was kind of like, um, he understood the struggle with like, nobody really talks about grad school and like the importance of like learning um, how to get from undergrad to grad school, which has helped me so much. Yeah, two quick points on this is one, um, one of my corporate finance professors, having seen like a lot of students go on, graduate from school, graduate from his class, get internships. He actually helped me source my uh, first year internship. He's like, yeah, I have like a student working here, student working here, I'll connect you with them and kind of talk. And that's how I eventually like carried on my internship search. I thought it was absolutely incredible. Um, another thing that Angela touched on as well is research. So I work at the Financial Economics Institute and I get to do a lot of like outside the classroom learning there, which actually helps with my professional kind of job search and job scope. Um, I work primarily in the financial technology kind of space, which is like the intersection of my academic interest, economics and computer science. Um, so that my projects there allow me to talk to a lot of firms in the vertical in the industry and connect with them and learn more about what they do. And I think that's like such an invaluable experience to have outside the classroom. Yeah, um, kind of going on the like trend of like things that you didn't think were going to turn into great academic experiences that did. Uh, I have two quick stories. So the summer after my freshman year, I was working at a tour guide at MUD and every day I would walk down the physics hallway and this one professor would always be in his office. His name was Mark Ilton. And I would be like, hey, Prof Ilton, do you want to tell my tour about your research? And he was always very kind. And he came and told my tour about his research like five times a week. Um, which is like very nice of him. And then turns out that like every time I heard him talk about it in my head, I was like, wait, this is really cool. And then I ended up, you know, kind of going back to his office on my own time and having talks with him. And then I joined his lab and I still work there now. So that's really fun. Um, and then in terms of study abroad, um, one of my math professors was like back in my day when I was an undergrad, I did this really awesome like study abroad program called like Budapest Semesters in Mathematics. Uh, and she basically convinced me that I should do it. And she ended up writing me a letter of rec and writing me letters when I was in Hungary too, stuff like that. So that was really sweet. Yeah, um, going off of study abroad, I actually got to study abroad during the summer after my freshman year. And I went to Copenhagen and I studied urban environmental sustainability, which is very Pitzer and very up my alley, um, which is a lot of fun. And especially going there by myself, I just learned so much about how to navigate another country. Um, and we also have really great study abroad programs where you can do the more traditional option by just going to a university or you can actually go with a group of Pitzer students and live in homestays and be taught by Pitzer professors in those countries if you want that environment too. Sweet. Awesome. Yeah. So as you can see on the Q&A box, we have lots and lots of questions. So for the next couple ones, um, maybe I'll have two students um, answer the question that I posed just for the sake of time to try to cover all those bases. Um, so this next one is about off campus life, um, not from a research and internship perspective, but from a fun and recreational perspective. Obviously, a big draw for students is the fact that we're located in Southern California, 35 miles east of downtown Los Angeles. So um, maybe Milena and Kaylee, I'm just kind of like 
picking people. Um, if you want to maybe talk a little bit about um, getting off campus, um, the village as well as kind of broader Southern California vibes, that would be great. Yeah, of course. Um, as someone who doesn't know how to drive, this is a really fun question for me um, because I definitely have never felt isolated on campus. I actually go to the village every week with my friends and we'll get boba or have dinner there, which is always really nice. Um, I also spend a lot of time in Target just like there for fun. Um, but Pitzer does have a great um, Pitzer Outdoor Adventure program. So in that program, we're actually sending people on weekly trips um, to do hiking excursions, to Joshua Tree, things like that. I like to point out our fun sunset hike where it's you have to wear a fun costume if you want to go like a banana suit or a cowboy outfit and you hike up to the top of Mount Baldy, which is a mountain nearby and you watch the sunset with the group and you eat pizza with them. So that's a lot of fun. Um, but I think what's really great about the Pitzer culture is that you can send an email to the whole school and say you're saying, I'm going to LA and leaving in 15 minutes. Who wants to come? People will actually respond to you and go with you, which is also really nice. You picked two people who can't drive because I also can't drive, um, but it hasn't been a problem from what I've noticed. Um, yeah, I say like I probably go to the village the most often just because like I like boba and stuff like that. Um, but actually, like I also have this one friend who goes to Scripps and she keeps winning these like Dancing with the Stars tickets to go watch it in L.A. So I don't know how she keeps getting them, but uh, then she'll always take me with her. So we just go to the village and get on the like Metrolink train and it's just an hour into LA. So, I mean, even without a car, it hasn't really been a problem for us. Um, so that's like been really fun to have opportunities like that too, um, like not that far away. Um, and then also Mount Baldy, I discovered, I don't know why, like my first year I just didn't go. And then I discovered it that next summer and I have loved it ever since. Sweet, awesome. So for the next question, um, we also got a lot of questions from different people about support at Pomona, particularly, or Pomona, Claremont College, sorry, <laughs> um, uh, for students who come from different backgrounds and identities and lived experiences. And obviously, the Claremont College is a very, is a very global place of substantial, you know, population are international students, many first generation low income students, um, students coming from all 50 states, right? Um, so kind of maybe Jeremy and Angela, if you could talk a little bit about how you've seen the college's support students who come from different backgrounds and identities and how kind of those shared resources such as affinity groups, iPlace, um, any of those kind of different initiatives that you've seen to help support students. Yeah, absolutely, I'll go first. Um, so I'm an international student from Singapore, I have a Singaporean passport um, and the five C's and CMC have been super supportive. Um, there's some amazing affinity groups, um, 5C affinity groups, school specific affinity groups. I'm on CMC. We have Mihente for all students who identify as Latinx. We have a mixed identity student union that provides a space for all kind of mixed students um, to kind of talk and grow and interact with each other. CMC also has APAM, Asian Pacific American Mentors. So as a first year of your Asian or Pacific descent, you get to go in and then you get a mentor and then they kind of help you out, take you out, help you to meet people, go for like Korean barbecue. It's also a really fun time. As an international student, iPlace has been like such an integral part of my college career because they're the ones helping me get my visa, help me make sure I have all my requirements uh, to be able to stay in the country. And even before coming to college, they were like super interactive with me. Like, hey, we need all these forms. Also like prepare this, don't forget this. And coming in as a first year, um, if you're an international student, you also go on this um, kind of international orientation that iPlace puts on, it's called MISO New. Um, international student scholar uh, international student scholar orientation um, so it's a really good kind of platform for you to meet other international students as well um, before coming to college so school provides absolutely amazing resources for um, international and more like diverse uh, students yeah similar to jeremy there's um, a bunch of identity affinity groups on campus. Specifically, Scripps has um, Cafe, Cafe Con Leche, which is uh, the Latinx affinity group, Watu Wesi, um, for Black students. Um, there's also ASU, just many others. And personally, like, Cafe Con Leche has held retreats where we just go off campus and kind of like bond with each other. And those are kind of like, uh, those communities very much help like your experience and like your transition to college which has helped me a lot um there's first gen at scripts which has helped so much because like the first gen experience is so different than like a typical um student who like who has had parents uh, attend college 
So it's just like a bunch of different groups that you can, that are um, specifically at your college or at the five C's that have helped a lot. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So another really good question that was flagged in the Q&A box uh, by my colleague, Ariana. So thank you, Ariana, for finding this gem. Um, is basically, what's one thing that you wish you knew before attending the Claremont Colleges? And I'll toss this one to Trey and Milena back again. We'll do a little recycle. Oh, man. Um, I think that something that people don't realize going from high school to college, um, I, went, I went to boarding school, so it's especially true for that. It's just how much free time you have. Like, I, I, I was not ready for it, you know? Like, it sounds weird, <laughs> but, you know, I would have taken advantage of more things and put myself out there more in like my first year um, if I knew how to manage my time better. And so I think that kind of, kind of what happens is like you're spending less, you know, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. or whatever your school schedule is and more like, you know, two classes a day that are like an hour 15 each or something like that. You know, um, I, I don't have Friday classes. Like I've only had Friday classes in like one semester, uh, stuff like that. So I think that it's really, you know, anything that you've ever wanted to, you know, try out or anything that you find out about on campus that you want to try out, like, just go for it, you know, like, I, I think that, you know, if you, if you find that it's something you enjoy, you'll find the time. Um, and, you know, perhaps it could become a passion of sorts, right. Um, and, and I think that's just something that's really cool that, um, you know, I continue to try to try to do new things each year, um, whether that be like a club or a class or a sport, whatever. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm someone who really loved high school. So the idea of college was pretty daunting to me and kind of moving on with my life. Um, and something like I learned and wish I could tell my younger self is that like, you'll definitely find a place where you belong. And I think especially at Pitzer, like I was a little nervous about not fitting the stereotype of being super hipster and granola. Um, and I can say that's totally fine. And of course, we had that too. But it's all about your mindset and how you're approaching the situation. And I think the biggest thing I've also learned is just to take up other people's interests. That's been so much fun for me. And I definitely suggest doing that to anyone who can. Um, like a personal example of that is that um, I joined someone's like fantasy basketball league at Pitzer. And I like had no idea what fantasy basketball was before that. But I was like, you know what, I'm just going to make new friends. Um, and I signed myself up and I actually came in first place. So that was really exciting. I did a lot of research, but um, it was really nice to just talk to people in the dining hall about that. And just seeing what people are passionate about is such like an in for making friends that I definitely suggest to. Milena, yet again, is the segue queen because um, my next question is kind of on the vein of each college's individual identity um, and, you know, stereotype lack of, you know, if you will. Um, we don't really like to use the word stereotype because I think that's really um, limiting and kind of putting these blanket statements on everyone who attends this school is X, right? Um, and the Claremont Colleges have lots of multifaceted individuals who attend them, right? But I think there are some things that kind of make our campuses different and distinct and unique. Um, so this one, I'm gonna open it up to everyone back again. Um, if we could go in founding order and maybe have each of you um, from your respective colleges, maybe talk about kind of like what your college's role is in the consortium and kind of like where you feel like you see, you know, certain traits or certain distinct things about your own institution that you've really admired during your time as a Pomona, Scripps, CMC, Pitzer, or Harvey Mudd student. I think I see Jeremy with a finger though, so. Yeah, sorry, Tom, I actually have to go for a class in a little bit, so it'd be all right if I take this question. Yes, please go first, today. yes. Please. Awesome, so sorry, everyone. Um, I think for CMC, uh, we have a very big leadership focus in uh, what we do. So um, big focus on kind of like leading different projects in your class, leading, taking charge of like an individual thing, whether it be in a research institute, like taking charge of um, your own topic or own kind of project. So leadership is something that we really value at CMC and try and like instill in our students. Um, learn that kind of interpersonal skills as well, like working groups, that's something we think is really important. So not only learning the subjects that you're touching on in class, but also kind of how to talk to people, how to manage different group dynamics. And that's something really important. Um, if it's okay with you, Tom, would it be, if I could drop my email in the chat for everyone. And if anyone has a question after, I'll be more than happy to answer um, anything and everything. Absolutely. So Jeremy, thank you for your time. We're glad that you were able to join us and um, it's all about learning. So have fun in class. Absolutely. See you everyone. Thank you again. Um, so continuing on with the panel, um, I think we'll go, yeah, if Trey, if you want to kind of hit that Pomona specific question, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a tough question. It's like, 
you know, for, for Pomona, like, I don't mean to sound cliche, like, at all, but it's, like, I don't think there's really, like, one mold, you know, and that's probably true for, like, all the colleges. Um, like, I don't think it's, like, they'll definitely major in this, or, like, they'll definitely be interested in this, or, like, have this or that about them. Um, and that kind of relates to the way that Pomona was founded, in that it was founded to be, like, the East Coast liberal arts experience on the West Coast. So, you know, you'll hear people say, like, Pomona is the true liberal arts or whatever, you know, like, just in that, like, that's kind of, like, what it, what it was meant to be. Um, and so it kind of manifests manifests in the students and that, you know, you'll find that your friend group could be made up of a whole bunch of different majors, you know, um, like a whole bunch of different backgrounds, that kind of thing. And so, like, for my friend group, for example, I think we speak, like, eight different languages between us and all have different majors. Like, it's, like, super weird, but it, it just happens. Um, and you find ways to like connect with students, like even though you're not necessarily like in the same classes. Um, I'm not sure if that exactly answers the question, but um, you know, it's just kind of how I feel about it. <laughs> For scripts, um, where because it's a historically women's college, we're kind of seen as like our our stereotype is like feminist, bra burning kind of. Um, tote bag wearing kind of girl, but I think at Scripps there are a lot of different um, people who I like different identities in terms of genders, but the female, um, it's, Scripps is centers around like the female identity, but there are different um, identities that people identify at Scripps. And that's kind of like what drew me to Scripps that um, it was kind of like, I was talking about it with one of um, my friends that like scripts, in a scripts classroom, you're kind of like the majority because in high school, it was mostly like, you know, co-ed classes. It was like men and male dominated in the classrooms and like the discussions, but at scripts, it was kind of like, you're the majority and you're kind of like prioritized in these um, spaces, which I really enjoyed and which was also a big aspect as why as to why I chose Scripps. And like as a senior in high school, I came to visit Scripps and I love the community. I love the students. Like they're all friendly. And I remember I was trying to get to a class because I was um, as a prospective student, I was like sitting in on a class and me and another girl were so confused, like where the class was. And we were just walking up and down a street and then a script student out of nowhere just like hey do you need help and it was they like helped so much and like we didn't even say we need or like you know we were kind of nervous to ask people and like interrupt what they were doing or like i don't know if they were busy or not but like they went out of their way to help me like a prospective student which i really enjoyed and it kind of like impacted my um like what i wanted in a college a lot Um, I would say I think the like stereotype of mud a lot of the time is that like there's people who like STEM. Um, but I think what I found when I got to mud that made me much happier um, was that like mudders are really like multidimensionally passionate, if that makes sense. Like we have a really big HSA uh, requirement too. And so like I think it's really cool that I have friends who are like really into engineering or physics, but also like really into classics or theater or art and stuff like that. Um, so I think that overall, I would say that MUD students feel like really interdisciplinary and like collaborative between different fields. Um, and I think that is something that I really admire. Yeah, and for Pitzer, I think in comparison to the rest of the consortium, we're definitely the environmentalists and the activists. Um, but we also have five core values that we really embody as our student body, as well as our physical campus does embody that too. Um, so those are just intercultural understanding, interdisciplinary learning, student engagement, social responsibility, and environmental sustainability. So you're going to see those in all of our students. And you don't need to have all five. You can definitely just have two. And that's totally OK, because we all kind of make that up together. Um, but I also like to say that I feel like Pitzer students are in a sense like we don't fit in and that's why we all fit in because we're coming from all these walks of life and we can be like the outsider in a lot of situations but then coming together it's been really cool to bond with those people and find similarities too awesome yeah so on the vein of spilling the tea there was also a few questions about maybe some of the negative aspects that you have you know experienced during your college experience um, some things that maybe you wish you could change about your experience whether that's at your individual institution or the Claremont College is more broadly. Um, so given that this is kind of a, a good question where I think all of you 
should have a chance to be able to answer. I'll have you all kind of go in founding order again. Um, and knowing that there's 10 minutes though, if we want to keep these maybe like quick, brief answers, that'd be awesome. All right, quick, brief answer. Um, I think as a first year, one of the biggest things you'll face is imposter syndrome at uh, Pomona's campus. Um, at least that was my experience in that you'll find all these like super accomplished people that like don't make a big deal about it, which is like cool because they're humble. But at the same time, you're like, dang, I didn't, I didn't do all that. At least that was me. <laughs> um, and then past that, uh, you know, a lot of students are kind of like dealing with the fact that we have to, we've had like staff furloughs have been planned for a couple of days from now. Um, and then, um, you know, the support for black students on campus is another big thing. Uh, and uh, I'm trying to think of the last thing. It'll come to me. Oh, yeah. And then just like online, everybody's having qualms with that. But, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Yeah, I fully agree. Um, I think Scripps specifically, one thing that stood out to me a lot is how um, inaccessible um, some places at Scripps are. Like, um, mostly, I think in Bulch, we have like, it's three stories, and I've heard that the elevator's always broken, and some people find it difficult, like, to walk up the stairs, or like, I know Scripps um, had some, like, pushback with some students who wanted to, like, create ramps in different places, but Scripp said that like it's going to ruin the aesthetic that the college has been trying to go for, which is very frustrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, kind of tying it back to what Trey said a little bit. Um, I think that at MUD, like the core curriculum, uh, your like first three semesters is definitely really challenging just in terms of like difficulty and workload. Um, and it can be kind of overwhelming. Um, but I think that uh, professors and uh, administration are currently in cahoots and like redesigning that and they're looking, uh, they're like taking a lot of feedback. So um, I'm not sure like what that will look like, but I know that that is something that like a lot of people have been like trying to uh, make improvements towards because it has been kind of rough sometimes. Yeah, and adding on, I think your least favorite part of campus really depends on your positionality. So for me, coming from New York City, I'm like, very go get or do things as fast as possible, always have a plan. And I think that's definitely not the California culture. So that's something I personally had to adapt to, um, which has been great for my relaxation, but um, definitely a cultural shift. Um, and then I think in general, Pittsburgh students are just super passionate. And I think with that, pa that passion really follows them wherever they go. And so sometimes it's hard to separate your passion from whatever you're doing at the moment, which can make it hard for the individual sometimes just to be like carrying that load all the time to kind of separate as well as just coming from like all of these diverse opinions and having uh, like equal conversation too. Awesome. Yeah. So I think in this last couple minute window that we have um, for the sake of time, a lot of questions as well coming in about basically just like advice for people who are applying to colleges, whether they're, you know, people who are current seniors in high school, people who are looking to transfer. Um, if you could just maybe bestow a little bit of your wisdom as people who have successfully gone through that feat, yay, um, and are thriving, maybe some days hiccuping, but you know, that's life, right? Um, in your college experiences, um, if you could just maybe um, drop a little wisdom for the attendees about their college search process. Um, I think that would be a great high note to end the session on. Um, so are you saying this is the search process or like applying to our college? Both. Whatever you're called to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, search process. I think that um, the big things to keep in mind, which I hope, you know, maybe you're already keeping in mind are like your size, and like what you're looking for um, in terms of like the classroom environment, um, those kind of go hand in hand, as well as like location, you know, you might not think it's a big deal, but it kind of is, you know, it's where you'll be living. It's like what the outside will be like in a certain season. Um, it can really affect your mood. Um, and then just like the people, if you're, of course, you know, now it's a little bit tough, but if you're able to set up, you know, some kind of interview with like a current student or something like that, um, just kind of get a sense for what the students are like. I think those are pretty big. Um, and then for Pomona specifically, I know that like for our admissions process, they're like liberal arts fit, um, intellectual curiosity, uh, academic rigor. So what does that mean? Like, you know, making sure that you're still challenging yourself in high school, but, you know, still taking care of yourself. Um, intellectual curiosity in that, you know, you have all these different interests, you know, and that kind of fits into the liberal arts fit of, you know, not necessarily looking for like, you know, they're not always looking for just like the really smart kid, right? It's like, you know, who has interests in all these different areas, right? 
Um, and so I think that's a, those are some things to keep in mind for Pomona specifically. But um, yeah, of course I'd talk more, but I'll stop. <laughs> For me, what helped during my college search was kind of just like, I think going with the flow helped a lot, but I know it's easier said than done, but it was more like, um, I know for my personal experience, I Scripps wasn't at like the top of my list, but once I came and visited Scripps, it was, I loved it so much. So maybe it was like, for me, just let your college search take you where, where it takes you and kind of like, and be open to anything. Um, yeah, and I think, yeah, Scripps, I just really enjoy my time here, and yeah. Um, one thing with, like, college searching, especially if uh, you have time to kind of still expand your horizons, is kind of give everything a chance. Um, like, I remember I thought, oh, I really, like, I'm a really social person, and I really like meet, meeting lots of friends, and that means I want to go to a huge school, um, and, like, evidently, like, I've come to the five C's, which is not a massive community, but, like, I've been really happy. I haven't run out of people by any chance, um, but I think that, like, had I not, like, still, you know, thrown it in the mix and, like, given it a thought, like, I would never have considered um, that, so, like, whatever that is for you, like it is important to consider size and location and all of that. But I think kind of like, I think it's not so much of like a category, but kind of like what do those things like mean in terms of like your values? Um, if you can kind of like connect those, I think uh, is like an important way to think about it. Yeah, I have like three pieces of really quick advice. Um, I actually toured like over 35 colleges in my search process, so I know how overwhelming it is, but I just like want to reassure everyone that you'll be able to make a home for yourself wherever you end up. And it's really all about like what attitude you're going in and kind of being really intentional about the choices you're making in that space. Um, but it's something I really love doing is just like embracing the why not attitude. I think that's such a like fun thing to do in college if someone asks you to like go on a hike and say why not let's go or like go to a talk why not let's go and I think that's just such a great like way to make friends and also kind of try new things and I think it's also interesting in high school when you like are applying to college you're trying to prove that you belong there and that you're an expert in your field and you have great grades and all these things but I think once you get into college I think the best part is that you don't have to be in an ex you don't have to be an expert in anything like you can really try new things and I joined a heels dancing club I've never done that before an archery club and all of these cool opportunities I think colleges provide such a great like opportunity to find what you're passionate about and really um, capitalizing on that too awesome well, I cannot thank you all enough, um, attendees, for, you know, uh, coming in to share more about your college experience at the Claremont Colleges. Um, if you're comfortable, panelists, uh, there were a few students in the chat who were asking, you know, for emails or ways to get in touch with you all. If you'd like to include your email in the chat, um, I know there's several students who would appreciate that. Or if you want to drop, like, your admissions, the admissions Instagram account or kind of any other way that you think um, students would be um, behoove them to learn more about your respective campuses. Um, I think people would really appreciate that as we kind of wrap up this session. Um, thank you to those of you who attended as well. We hope that this was helpful to you. We know that you had lots and lots of questions, hundreds that we weren't able to get to every single one specifically, but we hope this provided you with a really great overview. Um, and um, we hope that kind of this uh, is a great jumping board for your college search process. Again, all of our campuses are going to have virtual tours, information sessions, ways to connect with admissions officers, or more excitingly, ways to connect with current students. Um, so definitely check out all of our respective institutional websites um, to learn more about how to do that. Um, and again, as all the panelists uh, said, best of luck with your process and believe in yourself, um, have that sense of confidence, uh, know that you're gonna land where you're meant to make an impact. Um, and yeah, think about it as class half full as opposed to class half empty. Again, as Angela said, easier said than done. Um, but we, we believe in you um, and we know that you'll land where you're supposed to. So thanks so much for tuning in and enjoy Zooming. <laughs>